Okay, can you see my screen? Shake your head if you can. Okay, good. Okay, so here is the here is the spreadsheet that we are going to now use to determine um, we're going to use to determine how much you should be charging your clients per hour for you to achieve your desired margin, your desired profit margin. Okay, so now let's start out with the most important thing. Now, this spreadsheet has been locked. So um, you won't be able to change any of the cells. So this, is, so this spreadsheet is going to be available. Um, so I will put the link in the I'll put the link in the, in the chat. So if anybody's interested in purchasing the spreadsheet, it will be available for you. What I have done is I have locked all of the all of the cells with the exception of the cells that are in gray. So if anything, all the cells in yellow have been locked and all the cells with writing has also been locked. And the reason why I locked it was because it's really easy to go in and accidentally key a number in a place where a formula is. And I've done it and, and did it. And of course, when you do that, if, if you don't know what the formula is, I know what the formula is, so I can go back in and, and reformulate that cell. But if you don't know what the formula is, formula is then you've just messed up your entire, you just messed up your entire, um, entire spreadsheet. Okay, so let's start with how a total hours available for sale. So what you need to know first and foremost is how many hours do I want to work every month? Okay, that's one thing that you need to know. And I know sometimes it's difficult and it's challenging for us to know that because our hours fluctuate. But part of this whole exercise of setting your price and understanding your understanding your um, ideal your ideal client so that way you can target your ideal client is going to help you to stabilize your hours where you're not having to say, okay, well, I have to work overtime or where normally I'm working eight, six hours a day. Now I have to work nine hours so I can accommodate Sally Sue, who they never told me that she was coming, but just gave me a call. And because I need the money, I have to take her. Or I'm afraid if I don't, she's going to go somewhere else. So part of this whole exercise is so you can eliminate those types of, 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 of patterns because we want to be able to work when we want to work and, and, and set, our, set our hours because some of us have other things we want to do, whether we have other businesses that we want to start or other businesses that we already have that we're trying to also grow. We have children, we want to take vacation. And sometimes, <coughs> excuse me, it's hard to do all of that if you don't know how many hours you're going to be spending in the salon. So you want to set your hours. Okay, so <clears throat> under under this circumstances, we're going to say that we're going to work, let's say, 40 hours a week. Okay, so 40 hours a week equals 160 hours. So right beside that, in this in the column beside that, it's going to tell you what each cell what each cell stands for. So this cell is telling you how many hours do you work a week. So in this case, we're going to say we're working 160 hours a week. Okay. Now your projected productivity rates, what does that mean? That means I'm sorry, that's a month, right? Did I say I said Oh yes. So I need to change this to a month. Sorry about that. So now I have to unlock all of this and go back and change it and redo it. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, and I think I have a week in a few places, a number of hours you work per week, how many hours you're trying to, yeah, it, you're right. Okay. So how many, how many hours do you work per month? Okay. So here it's, it said, here is correct. It says total hours available for sale per month. So in this case, it's 160 hours. Now your projected pr productivity rate per month is 75%. So what does that mean? That means out of the number of hours you work per month, how many hours are you actually behind the chair? So what this means is, yes, 40 hours a week is what you're projecting to work, but you're going to have to take lunch and then there's, there may be some downtime. So if you've been a stylist for a while and if you know pretty much what your schedule is like. You already have an idea of how much time you take take off for lunch and what your downtime normally is. Because when you, unless you're really, really, really busy, and some people are, 
there's always going to be some downtime where you're, you're in between clients. You're waiting for the next, you finished one client and you're waiting for the next one to show up. So that's some da- downtime. And if you have been around for a while, you have an idea of what that is. So that means that I know that usually when I, I, I come to the, when I'm, when I'm at work and I'm projected to work 40 hours that week, normally I work for about, I don't know, maybe six and a half. Okay. So we're going to say your projected rate is, let's just say 75%. Let's say you come up and say, okay, I'm working 75% of the time that I'm there. That means that your projected hours that you're actually going to be working a month, the number of hours you're going to be behind the chair is 120 hours. Yes, you have allocated 160 hours for the month, but you're only working 75% of the time that you're at, that you're in the salon, which means that you're actually working 120 hours. Now let's change this to 85 because some people are non-stop. So let, oh my, let's change it to 90. I know some folks that just sniff their food and then keep working. So they can go on for 90, literally 90, 90%. But 90% now, whoops, 90%. So now it's telling, oh no, not 9%. That would be terrible. 90%. So now it's telling you that, okay, so out of the 160 hours that you have allocated to work every month, you are actually working for 144 hours out of, out of 160. So those are the number of hours that you are actually behind the chair. Okay. So now we have, we have that sorted out. That's, that's the most important driver because this is the driver that's going to, that's going to help calculate what you should be charging every hour to, to, to meet your goal. Okay, so your projected number of hours work per month is 144, we have that. Now, your monthly service payroll costs, if applicable to your business. So this means that if you have, let's say you have people that work for, let's say you have an assistant or people that work in the salon. So if this is not for you, because this can be for the entire salon. Okay, so the entire salon, if you have, let's say you have five, um, let's say you have five, uh, a stylist and you're projecting that each stylist is going to be there 160 hours. So that's 160 hours multiplied by five stylists or however you work that out in terms of whether they're part-time, full-time. So in that case, we'll change this to 800, right? So let's change that to 800. That means that the number of hours that you, you have for sale every month is, uh, is 800. The productivity, well, we're not going to say 90 because we know once we start dealing with employees, you know, they're not going to be, you know, working 90, 90% of the time. So let's be realistic and stay because, you know, you don't want people crying because they will start crying and whining. So let's change that to 75% of the time that, that they're there. Okay, so now you know that projected number of hours works that you have available, you know, um, or rather um, productivity, the pro- Productivity hours is actually 600, okay? It's 600 hours. And then let's say you have a monthly payroll cost. So the people that you put on payroll are going to be the people who actually do the work. Not your, not your assist, not your, um, your front desk uh, girl person, but the people who are doing the work. So the stylist, the, the actual estheticians, the massage therapists, they're the ones that are doing the work. So their monthly service payroll costs, because what they're doing is this is the cost of doing business. So if they weren't there to do hair, then you're not going to make money. So when you start looking at the cost to, to deliver a service, you have to also include what it costs you, to, your, what your payout cost is, okay? I'm gonna change this back to 160 for now. And I'm gonna change this back to 90 for now. But I just wanted to let you know that this is not just for the independent stylist, it's also for the hair salon as a whole. So um, now let's say you, you have an assistant that you're paying. Okay, let's say you're an independent stylist. So you want to include your assistant, excuse me, your assistant's monthly payroll cost here. So if you're paying your assistant, let's just assume that you give them, you pay them $25,000, I'm sorry, $2,500 a month, then that's what you would include there. That's the cost, part of the cost of the service. Then you have your contractor payout. Well, the reason why I put contractor payout here is uh, two things. One, if we're looking at a salon as a whole and we're looking at the entire salon, under monthly service payroll costs, we're going to be talking to talking about 
the cost that you are paying your stylist to be there. And then you have your con your contract to pay out. Now, in, in some uh, cases, you may have to hire contractors, okay? You may have to hire contractors for whatever, re whatever reason, you know, and I just threw that in there. Now, that did say, now, if you see where it says commission, you pay out. It could be for an assistant, <clears throat> okay? You may, you may have hired an assistant. Now, let's say you're, let's just say you are an independent stylist and you hire an assistant, okay? And you decide, and if you can see here, I'm going to change this where it says commission you pay out because that really should be contract um, uh, contract payments. And the reason why I don't like to use, you to use the word commission is because commission by its very nature is W-2 in, income. That means you are, you are hiring an employee. But we in the industry tend to use commission and contractor interchangeably, which is not correct. Contractor is someone who you contract, who you pay to be there or pay for a particular reason service. They, they, take, care of, they take care of all of their own taxes. Whereas a commission stylist is someone that you pay as an employee or a commission, anyone who's on commission, someone you pay as an employee and you give them a W-2 at the end of the year. But we have it a little bit twisted in our industry where we, we don't do that. So that's the only reason why I put contractor payout here, which contractor payout really shouldn't exist. But if you so happen to pay your assistant as a contractor, you will plug it in here. Then you have your back bar and your professional purchases. So back bar and professional purchases are gonna include shampoo, conditioners, color, relaxer, finishing products, ETC. So whatever you use on your clients to get the job done, that's going to be included in this particular cell. So we're saying for this month, let's assume that you paid $500 in um, back bar and professional purchases. And then you have your average monthly credit card um, merchant fees. And the reason why I, 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 because whenever you, because think about it, most clients pay with a credit card, right? So you need, so having that, that credit card machine and paying those merchant fees is part of your cost of doing business. Because if not for the fact that you had um, clients coming in, paying with credit card, you wouldn't need it. So if everybody paid you with cash or everyone paid you with a check and no one paid you with a credit card, you're not going to need the credit card machine. So therefore, it's you, you don't, so when you're trying to determine, is this a cost of service or is this something that is just the cost of doing business? Cost of service items are, do I need this service? Do I, do I need, do I need, or rather, do I, does this, is this cost related to the, the directly related to the service that I am offering. If it's directly related to the service you are offering, then it is considered a cost of doing business. Okay. So when you are, when your clients are charging credit card fees or charging um, their um, costs or rather when they're charging, excuse me, their service cost, then that is, the fees that you pay is a cost of doing business. Therefore, you want to know how much you are paying in merchant fees. So let's assume that you're paying $180 for this particular month. So your total monthly service costs without COVID mandated supplies is $3,930.00. Okay, so for now, let's take off COVID. So we're gonna take off COVID protective supplies just for now, and then we'll come back to to the COVID costs later on, okay? All right, so now you can see, your, so now your total monthly costs are $3,930. This means that, uh, let's see. So now the next question to ask yourself is, how much do I want to make each month? Now keep in mind that this is just your cost to do this, to do service, to do um, your cost to deliver the service. It does not include your regular salon business costs like your rent and other things. So when you're trying to figure out how much you want, you would like to make each month, you want to think about, you want to add up what your total expenses are for the business. Not the cost of doing business, but just your rent, your just regular supplies, towels, whatever you have to purchase, your, your cost of paying your receptionists, your cost for subscriptions, your cost for education, figure all that out 
for on a, on a monthly basis. This is why you should have a bookkeeping system because without a bookkeeping system, none of this is going to is going to matter because all of the data that you need to create this this particular uh, to put to input into this spreadsheet and to determine your hourly um, cost per service. All that information is going to come from your bookkeeping system. If you don't have one, then you can't do this. So once you have determined what it's going to cost you to for your bills, your business bills, okay, just your regular business bills, and then how much it's going to cost you for your personal bills, you have to add that together. And then you want to figure out, well, how much would you like to make each month? Now, this is where how much you think you're worth comes into play, okay? It can come into play here because when you add up what it's going to cost you for your personal bills and for your your other business bills, your actual um, administrative and all those other bills for business purposes, let's assume that it totals, I'll just throw out a number, let's say if it, it totals $10,000. Okay, so you know that with, if you make ten thousand dollars, and that's not including taxes now. So let's let's think about taxes as well. So let's say ten thousand dollars, and then we'll just add. Let's just say ten thousand. Let's just add. Let's increase that by maybe thirty um, percent, right? So we'll just say ten thousand dollars, and we'll just throw in an extra three thousand for tax purposes. But now I'm just throwing in numbers. Now when you do this, you want to sit down and you want to correctly calculate these numbers so that you are as close to on point as possible. So you, now you need $13,000 and th that $13,000 is going to cover your business expenses, your personal expenses, and hopefully it's going to cover your tax bill. Okay. Now the question is, well, okay, so all I need is 13 to make $13,000 a month. That's all I need. All right. Well, what do I think I'm worth? I've spent all this money in education. I've spent all this money doing all these things to make my business better, to make me a much better stylist. So what do I think I'm worth? So you can then add, you can tack on an additional, let's say, you know what? I'm going to tack on an additional $5,000 a month because after all, I think I'm worth it. Okay, so now you've gone from $13,000, is, which is all you need, to cover all of your bills, to pay your taxes, and to have a little extra to do other things that you want to do. But you still wanted to figure out, mm, you know what, I might add an extra $5,000 just because I think I'm worth it. So then now you're looking at $18,000. So that how much you would like to make each month, then you would just key in, because what you want to know is, what is your desired profit margin, right? Well, uh, to know what your desired profit margin is, it's, it comes, it's in a percentage format. But it's going to be hard for you to say, you know what, I think I want my desired profit margin to be 65%. Well, how do you know? I mean, that doesn't, it's not telling you anything. We work best with numbers. We want to know numbers because we, I can tell you what I want to make. I can't tell you what percentage of something is going to satisfy me in terms of how much to make. So I, I like to look at, look at it as very practically to say, okay, Anyone can answer this question, how much would you like to make a month? So what we have done is, what I have done is, I just said, okay, rather than trying to figure it out from a percentage perspective, let's figure this out from real, a, a, a re reality perspective. I want to make $18,000 a month. Okay, so now you know, you know exactly how much you want to make a month. So now you can figure out that in order for you to make $18,000 a month as an individual, or if you're doing this as a, if you're, do, if you're doing this as a business, then you, you, you know, you have other input, you have to figure out other expenses that are going to, you know, that are, are part, are going to be part of this whole calculation and then determine what you want to make a month. So, you know, okay, just based on this, that, Every service that you offer for 30 minutes, you have to make $76.15. Now, what is a 30-minute service? A 30-minute service is a haircut. I can do a haircut in 15 minutes. And the reason why I can do a haircut in 15 minutes is because I used to work for Great Clips. And they showed us how to do a perfectly good haircut in 15 minutes. Now, would I do a haircut in 15 minutes if, if I was in a, in a salon? No, because... Even though your haircut is going to be a pretty decent haircut, you know, a, a, an acceptable haircut, 
you want to spend more than 15 minutes on your client. I'm sorry, not 15. Yeah, more than 15 minutes on your client. So 30 minutes is not bad, right? So for 30 minutes, you will have to charge $76 for a haircut, assuming that all these inputs up here are correct. For an hour service, you, ha you would now have to charge $152 so, and so on and so forth. An eight hour service, you would have to charge $1,200 in order for you to hit your goal. The whole idea is you want to hit your goal. Your goal is $18,000. We want to know how do we get there? How do we get to 18,000? This is how we get to $18,000, okay? So you can play around with these numbers and the more you play around with them, then you're gonna get different results down here. Now let's assume that, so if COVID is no longer a thing and COVID has completely gone away and it's like, okay, well, you know, we don't have to worry about COVID, then these can stay zero at all times. However, if you say, you know what, I, I, I still need to want to buy masks. I feel more comfortable working in this, in, in this industry with a mask on for me and for my clients or even just for me and for the workers or whoever wants one. We want masks to be available. We want to make sure that we have additional sanitation supplies. Now, in this case, you know, we have gloves, masks, shields, plastic linings for the equipment, okay, protective equipment. Then we have for the sanitation costs, we have extra cleaning supplies, ordinarily not part of cost of service. So normally your cleaning supplies are going to be part of your cost of doing business. So they're going to be a part of your general expenses. So that in that case, you're going to, you're going to also have, um, you're also going to have a line item on your profit and loss statement under the general expenses for cleaning supplies. But you're also going to have this additional line for COVID sanitation costs, because if not for, if not, but not for COVID, you, were, you would have not bought these extra cleaning supplies. And because you've been in business a while, you already know how much you spend on cleaning supplies, right? So now that you're spending more money, you know how much is allocated, how much to allocate to COVID sanitation costs. Okay, so you have extra cleaning supplies and then you have your protective, um, so you have your sanitation costs and you have your protective equipment. So let's assume that every month now you're spending, let's say, 250 on protective equipment. Now, remember now, we're looking at $76. And that's another thing. When COVID first came about, people were asking the question, should I charge more for cleaning, um, for COVID supplies? And a per people on Instagram and social media will quickly jump and say either, oh, absolutely you should. After all, it's costing you more money. You should charge your customers. Why should you sit there and take the take the hit? And then you have some that will say, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't. Don't, don't charge them because, you know, um, you don't want to lose a client or it's just not fair. It, it's part of doing business, so you shouldn't charge them. Well, I always say, okay, that's all well and good, right? So you have you have people jumping from both sides, very passionate about how they feel about charging for charging extra for protective equipment. The question is, do I need to? And even if you have a good heart and you say to yourself, you know what, I'm not, I don't want to charge them because, after all, you know, this is something that none of us none of us foresaw. So. I'm just going to eat the cost. That's fine. But you have to make sure that you can afford to eat the cost before you start eating the cost. So when you, if you have a spreadsheet like this, or you have a tool like this, that's helping you to determine what you are charging on a um, hourly for every service, you can come here and look and say, okay, so right now I'm at $18,000. I need to make $18,000 a month. And this $18,000 a month really does cover all of my expenses both business and personal, it gives me the extra that I need and it gives me extra on the extra. So you know what? I don't need to charge extra for COVID, um, for COVID uh, supplies. So I'm going to just go ahead and eat the cost. But let's assume that that $18,000, even though you have your $13,000 that covers all your bills and then the $5,000 that you just charge just because you're worth it. But even at that point, you're, st you're making it, but you know, it's hit or miss, but you're still making it. Then you know that, you know, I'm going to have to charge extra for COVID supplies because I'm I'm barely making, I'm making it now, but anything above and beyond what I'm doing, it's going to cost, it's going to affect me financially. So yes, I'm going to have to charge extra for protective um, 
um, for COVID supplies or whatever supplies. So rather than listening to people on social media or your, or who, whoever else coming from a, a, t- a perspective of just how they feel about something rather than numbers and data that's driving the decision, okay, rather than coming from that perspective, um, you want to do the numbers. So if you don't need to charge it, then don't. But you've looked at your numbers, you're saying, okay, so now now let me add in, um, if I charge 250, for, or rather if I'm spending, let's just make it 150, 150 a month for protective equipment. Well, let's zero this back out. So right now we are at, what is it costing you? So your cost per hour, for your service is $27. So this is what it's costing you right now for every for every every hour that you put that you um every hour of service. So every hour you are behind the chair servicing a client, it's costing you $27 and 29 cents. That's that's what it's costing you. Okay, so your desired profit margin above that is 82% and that's based on the 18,000. So here's what you have to charge, right? So you know what it's costing you per hour right now. Now, if we add in COVID costs, so let's say 150 for protective. And if you're watching this when COVID is over, that's okay. Um, it's still it's still it's still a good exercise to understand. So it's costing you 150 for, for um, protective uh, equipment, and it's costing you an extra $100 for sanitation costs. So now you went from $20, $27 an hour for the cost of doing a service to, um, to $29, right? So you went from paying, so you actually went from, uh, okay, so yeah, so it's $29 an hour is what it's costing you to put on that service. So look at it. It didn't jump that much. Only jumped about two dollars. Okay, and then that means that your what you're ha- what you're having to charge for a service only jumped about. I think it jumped about two dollars as well, if I'm not mistaken. Let me make sure. Well, actually, it jumped. It jumped less than two dollars. It jumped about a dollar plus if you add um, if you add COVID supplies. So think about it. So you're agonizing about whether or not you should charge extra. Without these numbers, you're thinking extra means I got to charge my clients an additional $15. So if I was charging $80 for a color, now I got to charge, I got to charge 95. Wow. they, They may not appreciate that. Right. But you don't have to charge that much because now, now you have the data in front of you telling you that if you are paying if you are if you are buying um, supplies, if you're buying COVID supplies and it's only costing me two fifty a month for those supplies, I'm only having to I'm only going up, excuse me, my cost is only going up about a dollar or two. So realistically speaking, I really only have to upcharge them. I either don't have to upcharge them or I can upcharge them maybe five dollars. So if you add an additional $5 or even $3, they won't, it's not that big of a deal. Because if you're looking at just covering your costs, that's all you have to add on. So you're not, so don't, you're agonizing about, oh, I have to add on all this extra money, $15 or $20, because you don't really know. Because in your head, you're, you're, thinking, you're thinking about it in your head. You don't have it on paper to see exactly what it's costing you. So now that it's on paper, you know exactly what you have to add on and it's not as bad as you thought, okay? So, um, and you can always go back in and change your desired monthly income if you choose to after you add, you, you add in all these additional costs. You can always go in and do that, okay? So, um, yeah, so that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. I think I covered everything. Um, I'm hoping you all understood, or it was a, you had a, um, you understood exactly what, or rather how the spreadsheet works. Of course, if you have any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to me. But um, yeah, so that's I think that's it. Nothing else. Any questions, Elaine? Do you have a question? 